The black bear green butt is an extremely effective salmon fly that's been around for generations. In this video, I'm going to tie one using less than traditional methods and materials that work for me. I strongly urge you to explore other methods and materials as well. For a hook, I'm going to use a Dairiki number 899 heavy wire salmon steel head hook in a size 6. I like to secure the hook in my rotary tying vise so its point is within the jaws. A little different I know, but it keeps me from getting stabbed by the ultra sharp hook point. It holds well and allows for full rotary function of the vise. For thread, I'm going to begin with 140 denier fluorescent green UTC. Get the thread started on the hook an eye length behind the eye and take nice tight wraps rearward to anchor the thread and close down the gap in the hook eye return. Continue taking thread wraps rearward for a short distance down the hook shank. You can then cut the excess tag end off close. Snip an 8 to 10 inch length of small oval tinsel free from the spool. This will be enough to make numerous flies. Secure one end of the tinsel to the near side of the hook so its tip butts up against the return. Take touching wraps with your tying thread rearward, anchoring the tinsel to the near side of the hook as you go. Gradually, begin pulling down on the tinsel so it ends up on the underside of the hook. Continue taking firm thread wraps just ever so slightly down into the hook bend. Then, change direction with your tying thread and make nice smooth touching wraps forward up until you're on the flat part of the hook shank. Get hold of the tinsel that's anchored on the underside of the hook and carefully make touching wraps with it. I like to do four wraps to create the tip of the fly, but the number of wraps is really a matter of personal preference. Unwind your tying thread. I know, a little strange, but this will help to develop a nice even body on the fly. When you reach the tinsel, angle it slightly forward and use your tying thread to secure it to the underside of the hook shank. Pulling forward on the tinsel, take touching wraps with your tying thread to bind the tinsel to first the underside and then the near side of the hook shank. This might seem cumbersome and maybe unnecessary, but it really does help when it comes to creating an even body on the fly. Continue taking wraps all the way up to the butt end of the hook return. You can then snip the tinsel off close. Tuck that snipped off piece of tinsel away in a safe place for later use. Take wraps to further fill in the gap left at the return and cover any remaining tinsel. Now take touching wraps rearward with your tying thread creating a nice even underbody on the fly. Wrap all the way back to the start of the tinsel and then make touching wraps forward and back to build up a bright green butt on the fly. My preference is for one that's twice the length of the tag. You can also add a little volume to the butt if you like. For the tail of the fly, I'm going to use black saddle hackle. Pull down the fibers perpendicular to the stem and isolate approximately half an inch. Get hold of the fiber tips with the fingers of your left hand and squeeze hard. Pull on the feather to strip the fibers free from the stem. Although not absolutely necessary, if you hold the fibers loosely in the fingertips of your left hand, you can usually align the butt ends with the fingertip of your right index finger, thus aligning the tips as well. While holding the bundle in your right hand, measure to form a tail that extends to the back edge of the hook bend. Keeping that measurement, transfer the fibers to the fingertips of your left hand. Now, reach in with your tying scissors and snip the butt ends off square. Give your bobbin an ample counterclockwise spin, so when you take a wrap, your thread will jump rearward and catch just the very butt ends of the fibers. Make just a few more wraps to bind the fibers down well. Now, take touching wraps of tying thread forward, stopping about a sixteenth of an inch from the hook return. Pick up the piece of silver tinsel you snipped off. Lay it against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps forward to the return. You can then pull the tinsel under those wraps until its end is even with the return end. As you did before, take touching wraps rearward with your tying thread to bind the tinsel first to the near side of the hook, then pull down on it so it ends up underneath. Make sure to take thread wraps all the way back to the base of the tail. Again, take touching wraps forward with your tying thread up the hook shank, this time to just over top of the return. Do a three or four turn whip finish to anchor your thread 
then snip it off close. Give a little check. The body of the fly should look fairly level at this point, except for a slight bulge at the base of the tail, which will be evened out shortly. Load a bobbin with a spool of black UTC 140 denier. This will be used to create the body of the fly. Floss is traditionally the material for this, but I like the control I get with the UTC thread. Get your thread started right at the hook return and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag on the near side of the hook. Continue taking touching wraps rearward, covering the green thread wraps below. Keep taking wraps all the way back to the base of the tail. Take touching wraps forward with your tying thread, doing your best to make a nice even body on the fly. To get the body evened out and tapered so it's thicker towards the front, take touching thread wraps rearward about one third of the way down the body, then wrap back up to the starting point. Follow this with touching wraps two thirds of the way down the body of the fly, then once again back to the starting point. Now, go all the way down the body to the base of the tail. Give your bobbin a good counterclockwise spin to uncord the thread and flatten it out. This will make it more floss-like and allow you to accurately fill in any lumps or bumps on the body of the fly. Occasionally, give your bobbin a counterclockwise spin to keep the thread uncorded and floss-like. I prefer to check the fly from different orientations while doing this and have no qualms about going back and filling in low spots. I know this is counter to traditional salmon fly tying methods, but it works for me. Just remember to periodically flatten the thread out and you'll do fine. Really take your time to get the body shape just right and its surface smooth and shiny. You'll be glad you did. When you're satisfied with the shape of the body and with your thread so there's a sixteenth of an inch of green showing. Do a three turn whip finish and then snip the 140 denier black thread free. You could stick with a heavy thread if you like, but I like to switch to a smaller thread at this point to keep volume to a minimum. So I load a bobbin with a spool of black 70 denier. Get the thread started on the hook shank right behind the last bit of green and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Now do a three or four turn whip finish over top. This whip finish will allow you to take five counter wraps with your tying thread, one on top of the other. Because I have a rotary vise, I can simply hold the silver tinsel at about a 60 degree angle from the hook shank and rotate the vise. This causes the tinsel to spiral evenly over top of the body of the fly, ideally resulting in five perfectly spaced segments. Understand that those five counter wraps of tying thread unwound as you created the rib, thus keeping thread wraps to a minimum. Secure the tinsel to the underside of the hook with three turns of tying thread and snip the excess off close. I like to do another four or five turn whip finish to save my work up until this point. I'm going to turn my rotary vise so the fly is upside down for this next step. As with the tail, the throat of the fly is created with fibers from a black saddle hackle feather. Pick up the feather you used for the tail. Using the same procedure, pull down and strip off a clump of fibers from the stem and align their tips by aligning their butts. Lay the fibers against the underside of the hook and measure so they extend just shy of the hook point. Regrip them with the fingertips of your left hand. Reach in with your tying scissors and snip the butt ends off square. Give your bobbin a good counterclockwise spin so once again the first wrap will jump rearward and catch the butt ends of the fibers. Take one more wrap of tying thread to further secure the clump. I will almost always repeat the procedure with a second clump of fibers to produce a more ample throat. This is a matter of personal preference more than anything else. Take as few wraps as possible to firmly bind the fibers down. Now reorient your hook back to its normal position. This time to save my work, I'll reach for the super glue and give the just completed wraps a very light coat which will sink in and cure while you prepare the material for the fly's wing. For the wing, I'm going to go traditional and use black bear hair. Separate out an ample clump, about a half inch square, and snip it free from the hide. While holding the tips of the hair, strip out any under fur and shorter hairs from the butt ends. Then pull out any extra long hairs at the tips. 
although not essential, I do like to stack the clump to really get the tips aligned. Remove the hair from the stacker with your left hand. How sparse or full the wing is, again, is a matter of style and taste. I can tell you, a sparse wing is much easier to tie in than one that's very thick, so I'd highly recommend it for those of you just starting out. Measure to form a wing that extends to the back edge of the hook bend. And while keeping that measurement, transfer the clump to the fingertips of your left hand and anchor them on top of the hook shank. Reach in with your tying scissors and snip the butt ends off square. Press the butts down. Now, this time, spin your bobbin clockwise to cord it up. This will strengthen the thread and also give it some texture for more grip. Take only seven or eight wraps of tying thread to bind the hair down well. I know this isn't exactly proper, but making a smooth ramp down to the hook shank can be troublesome. It takes a lot of practice and often results in too large a head on the fly. So what we're going to do here, rather than take any more thread wraps, is squeeze out a small amount of UV cure resin and apply it to the top of the fly's head. Then give the resin a shot of UV light to cure it. This will not only keep the bulk to a minimum, but also help to prevent the bare hair from pulling free. You may have noticed I never even whip finished here, but with the UV resin cured, I can simply snip my tying thread off close. Once this is done, pick up another glob or two of UV cure resin and fill in the underside of the head and any other little gaps or areas of bare thread. I like short, sort of plump and even heads with some space behind the hook eye for a more classic look. As I mentioned earlier, the tying techniques shown in this video are far from traditional and work for me when I'm tying flies that are to be fished. I'd encourage you to explore other methods as well, particularly when tying this type of fly for show.